Hey there, friends. Happy Thursday to you. I hope that you are having a bright and beautiful Thursday. I just like saying that. Thursday. Happy Thursday. <laughs> I have two new journals to go into the shop today. I wanted to thank you guys again. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for supporting my Etsy shop. I so much appreciate it. Um, from the bottom of my heart, my little doggies appreciate it because you certainly do keep them in food and doggy bones and Arf, arf from them. They really like that. <laughs> uh, we've got two new fabrics that we're working with. We've got this super keen peacock. And I am calling this fabric bubbly because I just don't know what else to call it. But I really, really love it. It's like kind of, um, reminds me of the 60s in a way, but I don't really know why. Let's look at Peacock first and see what she has going on. Finished very, uh, very simply with some wood beads as well as some plastic beads. I thought that the yellow beads kind of made the yellow on the feathers pop. And of course, the middle of the of the feathers are pink, so it kind of just went together. I'm I regretted buying these beads when I first bought them, and now they're like one of my favorite things. I really do like them very, very much. So let's look in Miss Peacock. We start out with a nice little book plate for you, a kitty cat that is looking down on a uh, stack of books. Isn't that sweet? He's very curious about what's going on in there. And of course, we always include your story section here with a storybook as well. You know, I'm I'm very keen on the write yourself a new story thing. I think that it's really important that you um that you don't get into the same rut all the time by telling yourself a certain story and not even a story that you like. So Make yourself a new story. I think that it's important to write that story. Writing is super important. It kind of validates what you're feeling and it identifies what you're feeling. You know, even if it's just, you know, writing in the morning for a few minutes or, and, and do gentle writing. My, um, my friend Art Angel does gentle writing. There's a, a program called The Artist's Way. That encourages you to write three pages in the morning of just get it out, get it out. Well, I now a lot of people find that really helpful, but I don't find that that's a great way to start the day. I really do like to do, um, I'm getting you closer here, sorry. Work, work. There we go. Positive affirmations and um, positive aspects. I like to make a list of positive aspects and kind of go from there. But whatever floats your boat, right? Whatever floats your boat. Um, but writing is very therapeutic. Uh, we have our pretty pages right here. I love this wizard. I think he is so cool. And there are some dragons over here. There's a dragon right there. A, a, a collection of pretty, pretty flowers. Very pretty. These are Coreopsis. I, I like Coreopsis because my son's name is Corey and it kind of reminds me of him. Of course. And I talked to him last night. I tell you guys, I am loving my uh, Android phone and I am loving Duo. I can pop in on my children at any time and see what they're up to. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, this is from, I believe, the 1988 Colonial Homes Magazine. Again, a 1988 Colonial Homes Magazine. Um, this is a little bit, yes, this is also from that same era. We have some advertising ephemera for you. A couple of puppy dogs right there. This is from... Um, this, I believe, is from Florence. This is from Venice. Got some really cool photographs in here. I love this paper. It is very applicable to, to decoupage and collage and stuff like that. So really easy to work with. And, of course, some Italian ephemera for you. 
These are our home plans, and I think if you're going to make home plans, you might need some sticky notes so you can define what suits you best, what you like best, the colors you like. You know, this is the, these little home plans are all about you. Just make yourself your little dream home. Make your she shed on a big level. Do you guys like she sheds? I have a she shed in the back, but it is chock full of not she shed type stuff at all. <laughs> uh, I'll just let you hang with that for a second. It's not she shed. Uh, there is inside this little pocket that Kathy sent. I love these little pockets. We find uh, fabric scraps and paper scraps for you to play with. Another sweet dragon. This time he's reading a book. You know, if I had a garden, I would buy all this stuff because I love it. I think it is so much fun to go out in a yard and see things lit up. I'm not talking about clutter. I'm talking about you know, things that are tastefully arranged and cleverly lighted and that sort of thing. Uh, that was a magical time when when we were in Venice was, uh, you know, you're, you, you walk through all these medieval passageways, you know, at dusk. And then all of a sudden you're kind of out in the open and there are tables set and people serving food. It was just dusk in Venice is a magic time. It's just unreal beautiful. This is a postcard from St. Mark's Basilica. I have some paper flowers in here for you to play with, some hand-cut paper flowers. I like to sit down with a magazine and just kind of whack some paper flowers out for you guys. Um, I, I, am, I am fond of, of doing something while I'm sitting. I cannot sit. My mom and I were talking about this not long ago. I, I can't sit. If I sit, I fall asleep. That's just all there is to it. My hands really do have to be active and busy with some sort of project. Um, I'm super fond of cutting paper flowers. I really do like making hairy paper clips when I'm downstairs. I have my start box already with different small projects. This is our texture signature. Remember that um, these elements are for you to create texture with. You have chipboard, you have some metal, some styrofoam, some wood, a little bit of bling to play with. You could even apply the bling to these flowers over here. You could probably, that would be awesome for the center of a flower. I'm sorry, Mr. Owl is going to get tucked down in there because he can't quite stay on the page. And neither can uh, the metal skeleton key. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? We'll stick them in there. I wanted you guys to have paper. I know that that sounds weird, but when I first started out uh, doing art, I did not understand that there were different kinds of paper. So um, I'm giving you guys um, a little bit of Bristol board. This is something, it's a smooth kind of very heavy paper. Um, I'm giving you enough canvas paper to actually make a book with, and I'll show you mine in a different video. Um, this is Tim Holt's grunge board, and I wanted you guys to have some tr some transparency film. This is fun to play with because you can color, draw, or paint on this side, and then put the film over it. Remember transparencies when you were in school? Do you remember that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's funny to think about it being so long ago, y'all. Uh, I've got a bit of napkin and some tissue paper for you to play with as well. You've got over here, I've got metal tape. This is 140 pound watercolor paper for you to play around with just to see if you like it. Tracing paper, this is the other side of the canvas paper. I really like canvas paper for bookmaking. It's, I, I can't even describe it. it. It's really super cool. Scared to death of a canvas, but am okay with canvas paper. More elements so you can create some texture for your peaches. Pieces. I don't know where that came from. For your peaches. I don't even like peaches. 
<laughs> this is a hedgehog. Donna reminded me of what this was. She was like, that's a hedgehog. I was like, okay. I was telling you guys about the beaver that I have coming back and forth across my yard. Haven't seen him lately, but he is the funniest little thing. Umbrella man right there. Doesn't umbrella guy look really good on this dendronics paper right here? Oh my goodness, y'all. You can make the coolest Father's Day card using this dendronics paper. There's more right here. And using the umbrella guy. That would make a really nice, nice Father's Day card. I've got some vintage papers for you. We've got a little bit of French text. Um, some poetry. This is so lovely. This is old German text. Here, I'll lift it up and show it to you. Hold on. Call her hold, please. Hang on, hang on. Mark. Come on, baby. Um, there we go. That's a little bit clearer. Isn't that gorgeous? Such pretty text. A bit of Alice in Wonderland for you. Some beautiful Emily Dickinson poetry. I really like this Emily Dickinson book because it notes what year she wrote things. Uh, you know, she wrote her... Um, what do you say about that poetry? You know, she could drive home a point in eight lawns, you know. Uh, some Nielsen ephemera. I think this is from 1946. More Nielsen ephemera. A Valentine this time. This uh, silver is embossed. It's so pretty. It's a card for grandson. This is a Christmas card that's signed Winnie and Muriel. And the Valentine card is signed Grandma. And we know that these were happening around the mid-1950s is what we've been able to trace this to. The envelope is 1947. More papers for you to play with. I believe this is some um, Inspector Poirot. Pretty Poirot. Love David Duchesne. The Storm and After uh, is from a book called Into the West. Very old book. Five years later, this is Charles Dickinson, Tale of Two Cities. Very cool. I love old text and old text pages. I think it's... Um, you know, it's fun to rescue old books. And people give me books and go, I don't want this. Or I was going to throw this in the trash. I figured you could maybe use it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, please don't throw a book in the trash. <laughs> this is a super cool check from 1906, November 5th, 1906. Second National Bank uh, made to John Wanamaker. And I really love these front and back. I have put it in plastic because it is super fragile. But I love 1906 ephemera. I love 1900s, early 1900s ephemera. Okay, I just love it all. We all do, don't we? Don't we love it? Um, this is a brand new architecture's piece that features wicker baskets. I reckon you guys have probably... I reckon... Um, my southern roots are showing. My peonies are in bloom and my southern roots are showing. Um, these are wicker baskets and they're really cool. I know that you you guys have probably seen these at Michael's. I love this paper with the uh, buggy mobiles on them. More Venice and Florence ephemera for you. Look at that logo. Just so pretty, y'all. I kind of miss it. I don't kind of miss it. I do miss it, especially the breakfast in the morning. They were so elegant and beautiful, and it was so nice to have coffee. And I will be sharing pictures with you guys. I finally got everything downloaded to Dropbox, so um, I'm just going to do a show and tell with my pictures. This is a uh, this is a Venice travel brochure about the way you get around, and the way you get around is by boat. That creates a very quiet environment when you don't hear motorcycles and you don't see or hear cars um they are there are bicycles but i was surprised that there weren't that many bicycles again a little buggy this reminded me of uh there are horse drawn drawn carriages um in florence and in rome i 
didn't see any in Venice, but, you know, the aforementioned quietness and cleanliness, I guess. Um, this is a travel brochure about Daniel Boone and the Wilderness Road. You know, if you choose to keep your travels closer to home, of course. More Venice ephemera. And uh, this is from Florence as well. This talks about the high-speed train. That was an adventure. That was a wonderful adventure. Um, I had never been on that type of train before, and we just had the best time because someone else was driving. So you could kind of sit back and watch the scenery go by very quickly and <laughs> have something to eat, have a little glass of Prosecco. It was just beautiful. This is a nice big size map uh, that says Drive Historic Southern Indiana. I found some washi tape at the dollar store and this one says Big Dream, Big Dream, Big Dream. I love it. This is from, um, this is from Kathy. And she did tell me that she um, decoupaged these 1940s, 1950s recipes onto um, onto some cardstock for us. Aren't they neato? And they're typed on a typewriter. Oh, I love that. Which still reminds me, every time I see typewriter, I need to get my typewriter out. Um, maybe um, the farm opens Mon uh, Sunday, so we, got, we are going to have strawberry Sunday. And that means that my work really picks up. Uh, on Sunday. These are restaurant brochures. Again, it's printed on newsprint, so it makes it really easy to decoupage. Maybe make you some um, some postcards or something like that. Or maybe a vision board. Maybe you want to, to go overseas and do an overseas trip. Or maybe Italy is your thing. Um, vision boards are like writing. You know, you can visualize what you would like to do. And you kind of get it out of your head and onto a place where you can see it, which is, it's nice. And it, you'll be, you'll be surprised by how, how that really does work for your manifest, manifest Manifesting. Um, manifestation is a good thing. A premier showcase for Premier Bordeaux. This is a tasting note. This is from a 1988 magazine of recipes, and I really did like this so much because it talks about Carolina yam custard, uh, North Carolina yam pork chop skillet. I'm from North Carolina, if you had not guessed that already. <laughs> and uh, I was raised on yams, y'all. I was thinking, um, I was raised on pinto beans, coleslaw, cornbread, uh, tomatoes in the summer. Um, I mean, that's just what we ate. And it was delicious. And my mama was an excellent cook. And that's what she cooked. And even now, you know, at night, it's our thing for her, for me to ask her what she's having for supper. <clears throat> and often she will say, I'm having pintos. And your daddy made some coleslaw. And I made some cornbread. And I'm like, oh, my Lord, I wish I was there. This is a great little article uh, called Because You Had To, a look at how reusing and recycling was a way of life, not just the green thing to do. And I thought that that paired really nicely with, I did find one more recipe with the eggless, milkless, butterless cake. This is a Depression era recipe. This is a Depression era a photograph of people making sassafras tea. <clears throat> which is made with a root. I didn't, I don't think I really knew that until I read the article. A little bit of fashion for you. This is, again, a typewritten, um, a typewritten brochure about how to place a fabric pattern the correct way. I thought she was cute. Anytime you can put a baby in a book, do it. A really sweet little girl. And stuffed animals. I love that too. Love that as well. A beautiful place setting with avocados around it. Man, I've been eating avocados. Our stores have been having avocados for 49 cents. And it's like I, that's what I ate for lunch today. I just ate an avocado with a little bit of lemon on it. And it was delicious. More vintage, uh, more ephemera from from Venice. I love this image, you guys. It 
it I don't know what it reminded me. It kind of reminded me of when we drove through Tuscany. You would see these old farmhouses, and they would have weather vanes on top. And there's a beautiful compass rose right here. And I know that you guys can do something beautiful with that image. I'll have peacock in the store a little bit later on today. She's just so pretty. I really do like her colors. Um, let's take a look at bubbly. I love bubbly. <laughs> a really neat different kind of fabric, a different kind of color. Finished off with wood beads and some bone beads and I did find, oh I love these beads, these marble beads. I think they're from Germany and I, uh, I found another little batch of them and they really are one of my favorite beads. So let's take a look at Bubbly. It's a beautiful life and a chipboard butterfly starts you off. And your storybook, I've put in a skinny book right here for you. Dream big, y'all. Make your own story. A bit of pretty papers, and that's what I call the first the first signature in these books because I want it to be pretty. I want it to be inspiring. Look at those colors together, and oh my goodness, aren't we ready for summer? I am so ready for summer. It just seemed like winter kind of lasted a really long time this year. These are Campanella uh, plants. I think they're so pretty. They're even lovely when they're closed. Such a beautiful color of purple. This is from the 1988 um, Colonial Homes Magazine. This is also from Colonial Homes Magazine. This is fondant, y'all. This um, describes a lady that makes fondant for uh, cakes and all kinds of candies and that sort of thing. Look at that. It's amazing. Some advertising ephemera for you. Your dream house plans. I love things like that. When I first met my boyfriend, that's what he did. He did drafting, but not for homes. He laid out neighborhoods. And it was always kind of fascinating to watch, to watch him draw. More of the article about fondant. <laughs> I'm just crazy about that. I, I don't know how you would take icing and make it look so pretty and so yummy because I know it's really good. A watering can for you. Um, this is a sweet little mason jar that looks like it's filled with butter beans. Uh, a piece of a calendar that says cherish every moment of your life and give thanks. This is a little card that says enchanting. More things for you to play with here. I've got a full size um, piece of scrap board. Scrap book board right here. <laughs> That's hard to say. A frame that you can use and some puppy dog paws because I love puppy dogs. Um, more cut out flowers for you. Bling. This is our texture section. You guys know the drill here. Just lots of things for you to build and have fun with. This is our paper section again. Some bristle board for you, tracing paper, some canvas paper, 140 pound water paper. We also have napkins and tissue paper for you. This is a great signature to play with. And you can even create a book out of this canvas paper. One of my favorite things in the whole wide world. Got a little Prima flower and some Tim Holtz scrunch board for you. Some images to have fun with. Some wood right here. In this case, it's an owl. And, of course, cardboard. Cardboard is a great um, tool to use as a smudging element. Or you can peel it and add texture. It's just a fun thing to work with. We've got Umbrella Guy over here. And again, he's on some Dendronics paper that looks really cool next to that black. We've got some Japanese text for you. This is from an old magazine. I don't remember exactly what this is, but it looks like maybe a Swiss village. Really neat. Um, French text for you. More of that beautiful German text as well. It's so tiny. This is from a book called German Americans. This is a road sign to tell you where people lived. 
and I just love that. And this is like two pages, so you can really get a sense of um, the meaning behind this this um, road sign, which is technically what it was, a road sign to point you in the direction of homes. Got a little bit of Charles Dickens, some sweet um, Alice in Wonderland. I think this is where the snail is uh, talking to the whiting. The whiting and the snail are having a moment there. <laughs> ephemera from Rome. And I gotta tell you, my ephemera is running really low. I'm like, oh my goodness, it didn't really last very long. And people, I mean, you guys know, I left my clothes over there so I could bring back paper. Uh, this is 19, I think this is 1932 Nilsson ephemera. Very beautiful. 1960 Audell's DIY. This time about um, painting and cleaning your brushes and that sort of thing. From the 1942 Health and Happiness and Home Life, the Red Cross Nursing Manual. This is a great illustration about how to build a well. I just thought that was incredible. And I also think it's incredible that something like that was in a Red Cross nursing manual. So this was very basic stuff right here. Uh, and, and to me, it makes it even more interesting. Also, some Nielsen ephemera for my husband. These roses are beautifully embossed. And it's signed Kath, 1957. Very sweet. This is an advertising piece, Baby is King. And it is something else. It, um, it's an advertisement for um, infant formula, a lacto preparata, preparata. And it's got all kinds of stories and um, poems and articles about babies in it, which is really, really neat. I love the illustrations, super keen illustrations. More of the Nielsen ephemera. We are also running low on that. That's going to be gone quite soon. This is an article about a jeweler in, I believe, Venice or Florence. I can't remember where. Alice in Wonderland. This is a great illustration from A Tale of Two Cities. There's so much paper in here for y'all to play with. You can make cards forever and ever and ever with these books. This is a sweet little, um, sweet little piece of Rapunzel. You know, Rapunzel. Uh, not Rapunzel. Uh, Rumpelstiltskin. Sorry, I got my R's mixed up there. This is an architecture's piece, a full-size architecture's piece, uh, an, an old camera. And I know that you guys are familiar with these. Um, Art Angel gave me a whole lot of them, and I have used a whole lot of them, but I also have some left that I wanted to pass along to you guys. Some Italian fashion maps. A look inside some of these structures. Just... I've never seen anything like it. The gondola ride. We took a gondola ride and it was so much fun. A uh, carriage right here. This is from a 1983 uh, Country Living magazine. It is a, uh, an advertisement for an, a car. Uh, I don't know what kind of car it is. It's American Motors Eagle is what it is. I thought it kind of went really well with this. You know, the carriage here, um, the gondola ride, you know, transportation or conveyances in general. Got a map here for you. Uh, this is the town of Norris in the Norris Dam. I think this is in Tennessee, Tennessee travel brochure. If, if your um, travels might lead you closer to home. Nothing wrong with that. Y'all, this was a pirate ship. It was called a galleon, and it um, it went back and forth in the lagoon at St. Mark's Square. <laughs> you know how much I love that. You know how much I love Johnny Depp and Captain Jack Sparrow. Look at that illustration. It's just fantastic. Again, a postcard from St. Mark's Basilica. Very inspirational. In an out burger. I don't know how that landed there, but it just seemed to jump in here and want to be a part of a 
part of the fun. Um, this is one of my handmade feathers for you. So one of those uh, paper feathers, which I want to do more of. This is just a smattering of fun papers. A timesheet, a receipt from 1875. This is from the 1962 Family, Family Circle magazine. It's a, a brochure about how to order um, a sample book for carpet. This is the 1972 math workbook. I love this because it's a lot of people listed here. Um, Mahatma Gandhi, I think, is in here. Um, Walt Roscoe, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't really see it. This is, um, this is so cool. It's kind of like a wax envelope from the Nielsen, Nielsen ephemera, and it is foreign stamps from Peterborough, England. Not that there are stamps in there, but it was a, an envelope for stamps. This is the, uh, the fabric portion of the book. This tells how to lay out a fabric, how to lay something out. I don't understand any of that and so admire anybody who can take a piece of material and actually like make something out of it. You guys are my heroes. We've got some stickers for you right here. A little bunny rabbit. The Olsen Rug Company is the company that you could order from in 1962. You could order a catalog. And I have a beautiful check, October 30th, 1906, for $29, drawn on the bank of Fifth Avenue. And it's just exceptional. and even has the endorser's name on the back. Oh, very cool. Salvaged handwriting. Love salvaged handwriting. Okay, guys, these two books will be going in the store a little later on this afternoon. I am wishing you a happy Thor's Day, and I hope that you guys will make the most of your Thor's Day. Thor. Talk to you soon, y'all. Have a good one. Bye.